Um, um, Frank, Frank, when you think fairway, you think fresh. Is that the winning culture you've tried to create? Penelope Pineapple, what an unbelievable produce performance. How does your team stay so fresh? Sunkissed Orange, is it true Fairway has offered the freshest produce in town since 1938? What can we say? Our produce is so fresh, we're speechless. Spring is here. It's time to start thinking about family fun in the outdoors. This is Chris Williams promoting my good friends at Plaza RV in Bondurant. I've now bought two travel trailers from this locally owned company in the past five years. It's completely changed my family's life. We love spending time in the outdoors, tailgating, and most of all, being together. Camping has been an awesome escape for us, and I would encourage you to think about it as well. Head over to their lot in Bondurant. They have motorhomes, travel trailers, truck trailers, fifth wheels, and more. Check them out today at Plaza RV.com. They're 100% locally owned. Tell them that Chris Williams sent you. From the Channel Seed Studios, this is Iowa Everywhere. Channel Seed, seedsmanship at work. Hello and happy Monday. Welcome to Iowa Everywhere. Welcome to Two Guys here on the 15th of April. It is Masters Monday. My name is... Chris Williams. I'm joined as always by Chris Hassel. Boring Masters. I really didn't enjoy it this weekend, Chris. Didn't I liked his Scotty Scheffler? I think he's one of the great guys in all of sports. Um, just not a lot of drama. How are you? You're gonna bury your bald head in the lead here, huh? You're you're shining, shining bright like a diamond with that bald head. You like it? I think from now on, as soon as you get your head shaved. You have to immediately either head to the tanning booth, the spray tan, or go outside. You got to get sun on that thing. You look like the moon. I thought you were going to tell me that I immediately needed to dip my bald head in oil <laughs> and rub it all over a female's body. Like, like Maha- I used like- to dip my his bald head in oil and rub it all over my body. That's a Seinfeld reference for those who don't understand. This this woman with a giant boil. Goiter. Goiter. Uh, used to have sexual relations with Gandhi and was telling mm-hmm. Elaine about it. Right? I didn't miss yes. that. Yes, yeah, she, she would dip her his bald head in oil and rub it all over herself. And that's what George wanted to do with the, with that housekeeper. Oh yeah. Anyway, I, I totally agree with you on the masters the entire weekend. All I was doing was rooting against Scotty Scheffler. And he's like the nicest guy ever. Like, I don't like doing that. He is, but he's, he's too good. So the only way it was going to stay interesting is if he, had a few missteps, had a lot of missteps. And thankfully, heading into the back nine on Sunday, he had enough where it was close. But I never felt like anyone else was going to win this tournament other than Scotty Scheffler, unless his wife went into labor. And yeah. boy, that totally screwed me. Totally screwed me. Yeah. I gave you out my big- advice. You were banking on that fetus coming out. Well, I I wasn't banking on it, but I thought that that was too big of a risk to take Scheffler at 4-1. to Those kind of odds. At the time, I don't think a lot of people knew that he had already said that, that if his wife goes into labor, he's leaving. So I was the idiot that didn't take Scheffler. I took Rory to go top 10, and he was terrible, finished like 20th. 
All you had to do was finish even par and you'd be top 10. Roy couldn't do that. But yeah, I thought it was one of the less interesting Masters that I can remember. The only yep. thing I really I did enjoy was the course was really difficult. Yeah. Especially on Friday and Saturday. The only thing that kept me locked in was one I actually really do like Scheffler. Like he's one of my favorite him and great Ron, guy. Yeah, Just him not and Ron that are, interesting. No. Uh I had a plus six thousand ticket on Max Homa from DRF Sportsbook to win. I mm. I <laughs> And so that kept me on the edge of my seat just a little. But I, I'll be honest, though, I never felt like he could win. I, I never did. Yeah. Like I, even when he was just a shot behind us, it, it's just like, ah, Scheffler's going to win this thing. He's I just never, too good. He's too yeah. good right now. Fantastic. He's a, I, I was thinking about this last night. Like, if we had to name, like, list out, like, our nice guys in sports. Mm-hmm. Like would Scheffler would be on there. I think Purdy would be on there, wouldn't he? Like wouldn't Yeah, he's Brock a nice guy. Purdy? Yeah. Rock I mean, Purdy. I, or yeah, throw these, him on there. these athletes that it's like you can't really find a flaw. Mm-hmm. At least like what we see. Mm-hmm. Scheffler's just, definitely on there. Family man. I mean, I, I can't think of a single misstep he's had. No. The the, the only gripes I have is he's he's too good. He's not flashy enough. Um, that's about it. Who else are the nice, nice people in sports that we could think of? I mean, I could think of some coaches like the Fred Hoybergs of the world. Andy Reid comes off like that to me. Sure, yeah, he's he's a nice guy. Just laugh. Fred Hoiberg lovable. would be good. Yeah, just Andy Reid eating cheeseburgers. Um, I don't know. To be honest, I think Patrick Mahomes, until he had the little sideline mm-hmm. deals, like I, I would have, I would have thrown him on there. I really like Mahomes, though. I'm, I'm really biased towards him. Anyways, just, just kicking that around earlier. Uh, we are presented as always by Fairway Meat and Grocery. I, we had a brat feast before the St. Baldrick's event. So what we did, me and my, my neighbor Hutch. Uh, Aiden participated in this. Aiden, come on in. Uh, we we had chicken legs, we had cheddar brats, we had hot dogs. Chris, we had more meat from Fairway than you would know what to do with. How was the feast, Aiden? Did you appreciate the feast? Did you enjoy the feast on Saturday? Yeah, Hutch knows how to make a good chicken. So, Aiden literally came over. It was unbelievable. Is it? Do you remember like when you were in college and you never had a good meal? You know, I don't know. Maybe the priests were cooking for you, hassle, but like. They, they you should have you should have tasted the communion hosts that they would make for us at San Ambrose. What is mm. that? You don't know what a communion host is? Uh, it's like the bread and the wine. Yeah, the the right. little the little circular host, little no, piece of bread, oh, little wafers mm. to die for. So, so you had chicken legs and br- wait. So you didn't make regular brats? You made brats that were stuffed with something? They were cheddar brats. Yeah, uh, see, I'm not I don't I don't I don't play that game. You, you give me a real brat. Aiden comes over. So me and Hutch have been out there, had some cold beers. We're about three, four deep. Nice day. Like first day in the eighties, right? So we're all we're all amped up. Aiden shows up and he sees the chicken on the table and he can't even like hold a conversation with us because he's just so enamored by the smoked chicken legs on the table. And he, we're like, Aiden, so what are you doing today? What have you been up to? He's like, Oh, you know, I've been getting some work done. Is, is that, is that chicken? Is that chicken? <laughs> Aiden proceeds to eat about six chicken legs in two bratwurst within 20 minutes. It's like he has never eaten before. It Look, was I am unlike not in anything a spot I'd ever to seen. Give up free food right now. Yeah, what do you do for food, Aiden? I mean, do, do you just like do you just order in all the time? You go to like Jimmy John's? You, I, I, you don't strike me as no. a guy who's going to cook. I uh, actually been trying this lately where I blind make uh, barbecue mac and cheese, and it's not terrible. 
So what do you mean blind make? Me. Like you blind yourself? I don't look up yourself? a recipe. No. I just kind of guess on everything. See what comes out to. Barbecue mac and cheese? I've had chicken it's... and pulled pork in it. It's you really know, good. at some point, you're going to get fat. Thanks. <laughs> saying, keep eating like... Hey, when I was your age, didn't matter. Now it does. Um... Fake Bob, I have a I have a Bloom story here. Fake Bob Vanderplatt says there was plenty of meat when the priests were around. <laughs> Jesus, I'm telling um, you, it was all just bread. It was bread and wine. It was communion hosts and good wine. With St. Ambrose was, um, you know, you, you think ramen noodles when you're in, yeah. a, in a dormitory? No, communion hosts and wine. So Bloom lived with me for like eight months. In Shenandoah back in the day. And I'm not kidding you. I don't think he ate an actual meal more than two times. He never ate one that I didn't cook. He lived off of Subway, Burger King, and McDonald's. <laughs> well, look, That's when all my wife ate. is gone, I'm similar. I won't go like the Burger King, Hardee's, McDonald's route. But I will go Chipotle, Jersey Mike's. I'll go Chipotle for lunch one day, Jersey Mike's for dinner. And then the next day I'll do Jersey Mike's for lunch, Chipotle for dinner. And you, it, it, no point are you like, man, I should just cook a meal. It's just, it just seems too much because... You got to pull the meat out of the freezer, let it defrost. I don't know how long it takes for meat to defrost. You know, you could just put it in the microwave and hit the defrost. Oh, God, I'm not doing that garbage. Oh, Jesus. My. Oh. What? What now? We're going to get the WNBA draft. My, my wife. My wife is a great cook. But last night, <clears throat> she got this chickpea pasta. And we tried to have pasta, chickpea pasta with meatballs. So what, and it, it was what the is worst chickpea pasta? pasta. It's pasta made out of chickpeas. Oh, God. And it was like trying to bite through a snake. Like it felt like I was biting through bone to chew was, this stuff up. It was that, that thick? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. It was so bad. So bad. And she knew it, too. I felt bad, but so did she. So did you no throw it out? Do, do not try chickpea pasta. You guys That's, actually eat it? No. We ate the, the, the meatballs, <laughs> left the chickpea pasta for the garbage can. It's interesting, too. It's like, what, what went through your wife's mind? Be like, oh, this is a good idea. I don't know. She's like, well, high in protein, good for you. Let's get the week off on a right foot here. Because the meatballs, they were also chicken meatballs. So that's better for you than the uh, than the than the red meat. Yeah. Disaster. Man, you guys, you guys need to come up back here to Iowa and sit in my sit in my driveway, and I'm gonna get you some fairway meat. You guys will be living. You want some protein? I'll feed you some protein. We don't eat anything unless it had a mother in my house. Did you see? I, I don't know if this is if this I, I thought I thought it was a real account, but somebody over the weekend tweeted that the Minnesota Vikings, your Minnesota Vikings, are not going to serve anything that comes from a mother or a father in the stadium this upcoming season. That everything is going to be like fake meat, no dairy, no cheese. Yeah. I don't know if I can be a fan. Yeah, I, I you I'm, should reconsider. I'm fine with people making their personal choice to be a vegan. And it's fine to have that as an option. Yeah, absolutely. But if that's the only option. I need my protein. Go out to the ball game. We'll have a hot dog. Okay, great. There's well, no it's, way it's they're doing made that. Of, we, we, <laughs> There's no me. way that's true. <laughs> that's I, insane. I'm telling you, I saw it. Yeah, the Adam says U.S. Bank Stadium going 100% vegan. Yeah, well, 
that I'm going 100% watching games from my basement. What a disaster. What are we doing? Well, we started talking about fairway meet. WNBA <sighs> draft is tonight. Never in my life did I think that we would have so much buzz around the WNBA draft. No kidding. I've watched it because, like, like Finley and Iowa State have had players drafted, like when Bridget Carlton and like I've watched this draft before, and it's it, they do, it, but it, it's no, ne- it's always like it's such a weird time because it's right after the college basketball season, and there's there's really nothing going on in sports like it, at this point, and you would you'd always think like, oh, it should get more eyeballs than it does, but it's almost like people want a sports break. When you get to this period in a weird way, but tonight is like must see TV. Everybody's tuning in. The lead up, I think Caitlin was on the Today Show today. I thought I saw. Um, she was on Saturday Night Live this weekend, and you have all these women who have just been all over the place in media. It's been cool. I'm I'm excited to sit down and watch this tonight. I know my nine year old's fired up as well. By the way, Brian says that the the, the Vikings thing was satire. I, I hope I hope so. I I, I couldn't tell <laughs> if it was satire. It's pretty damn good because I, I I couldn't tell. But okay. yes, I I'm actually our um <laughs> our assignment desk called me over the weekend and they want me to come on tonight on HQ when Caitlin is drafted number one, and then they want me to come on after the draft is done and talk with our other basketball people about the draft like that I, it just blows my mind like we, we we've never done anything on the WNBA draft before i promise you yeah and tonight it's going to be so you don't, wall to wall what will you you work today right yeah okay like will you guys do lead up to it all afternoon not all, no not like the whole show but we'll we'll definitely have a segment on it the thing is like there's no drama like clark is going number one yeah but i think it's bigger than that i mean it is no there's there's no but what i'm saying is it's this big of a deal and we have no drama we know where clark is going we have known for a long time it's just uh yeah i just think like it it resonated to me where I, i like follow the WNBA on some social media and stuff and like the amount of huge names in this draft for women's basketball it's just it it's deep you know it runs deep like you know all these players Mm -hmm. usually it's like oh yeah i know two of them if you're a casual fan and no it's it's a great showcase tonight like i I would guess that it would lead sports center all day i would think yeah because what what else is going on i mean i guess you've got the nba we know the NBA play-in tournament now. We know the playoffs because the season Baseball's, ended yesterday, right? It's baseball, it's certainly geez. bigger than baseball. Oh my god, yes. And the only thing that would take any time from it is like Masters reaction, uh, but that it was such yeah, a yeah. What's that reaction going to be? It was not a really a memorable Masters. It wasn't no. a great finish. No. So I, this I think is the biggest story night. of the day. There's no doubt. The WNBA did a really good job, too, of getting their players or future players, however you want to put it out, into the media over the weekend. The Caitlin Clark Saturday Night Live skit was one of the best things that I've seen in a while. That was fantastic. Are we still doing Triple Bs? Yeah, yeah, we got the Triple B. Okay, well, that that was going to be my Triple B. Let's do the Triple B. Let's do it. Bigger, better, bolder. Powered by Kelderman Manufacturing. So my triple B is SNL because, I mean, this 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 is low-hanging fruit. Caitlin Clark was in New York City getting ready for the WNBA draft. She's the biggest thing in sports right now. You could easily just grab her and throw her on something. And, and that's, I had heard that she was going to be on SNL. And I kind of thought, geez, I mean, she... That's a tough spot. Like, what are they going to do? They actually created a really good spot for her. They poked fun at women's basketball. And Michael Che, who had poked fun at women's basketball many times. And they set Caitlin Clark up in a perfect spot. And she knocked it out of the park. I don't don't think they could have done a better job at bringing Caitlin on, promoting her. And then she gets to bring on three of her teammates at the end of the show as well. 
awesome. Yeah, and and Caitlin with the fantastic PR move to credit and honor the WNBA oh, yeah. players, but before her, like it, it was it was really well done. I I don't really watch SNL much anymore because I, I don't I'm, either. I'm the guy that just watches the clips when they get tossed around. Yeah, I'll, you, I'll see. The, like I saw the Beavis and Butthead one. That was that was great. Yeah, there was. Um, yeah, I I didn't know that Michael Che had, had done that. I didn't either. So it was perfect, though. Find yeah, a way awesome. to make fun of yourself. Put Caitlyn in that spot. Yes. And she even had a couple digs. And she was very likable. Like, I, I like seeing that side of Caitlyn because I know it exists. And, like, mm-hmm. when, when we when you just watch her on the court, she's a killer, man. Like, she that's just who she is. And that's, that's why she's so freaking good. Uh, but she is. She's got this cool personality, and I think it really showed in that. For I sure. just, I just really liked how they, they, they made it funny. Because I, I think in a lot of other instances, you get a situation like this. You just try to shoehorn somebody in, and it's not going to be funny. You're just putting that person on. This was actually funny. So kudos to Saturday Night Live, the writers, and and obviously Caitlin Clark. So that's this was always going to be fun for Iowa fans. Yeah, yeah, but it was also I think funny for everybody else. My mine is just mine's kind of sentimental, but all the people who donated to our St. Baldrick's event over the weekend, and we we have just like awesome followers, man, here and Cyclone Fanatic, especially we've been doing this for so our town now has raised $1.1 million over 15 years for this organization. Wow. That's a staggering number. I mean, Bondurant's not very big, right? And then we raised 18000 on Saturday night. And again, all these funds, it goes to an organization that... Wait, I thought you I, said you wanted to raise $500 or something like that. I, no, I said 4000 was my goal. And you raised how much? I personally raised about 3000 so i fell short but our entire event raised about okay. 18000 wow the other night that's great so it was cool and we had a ton of i had a ton of listeners out there who who showed up and uh, just hung out they didn't shave their heads but they were shaking hands and just we had a good time aiden came out old teddy flint our old buddy teddy flint came out chris shipley my main man he came out uh we had a we had a lot of fun so i I don't know. I feel like guys in our spot, like we, we probably don't thank the audience as much as we should because there's so many options for people to be entertained out there and choosing us. And just not only that, like we want to make this a community thing. We want to do good things and we couldn't do it without everybody being a part of it. So I wanted to thank everybody as far as that goes. And my other one again is just like I'm I'm enamored with this with this Scotty Scheffler. Like he he's so nice. He's perfect. I've got to find something bad about Scotty Scheffler. I can't. He's perfect. He's the perfect man. And that's why I don't really enjoy cheering him on. I, I don't know what it like he he seems to me like a robot. He's better than everybody else. He's nicer than everybody else. Seems like he's got this great family. We had this great upbringing. I'd like to know this. He said all weekend that he would leave, right? Mm-hmm. And I totally believe him. Like I'm not. I believed him. What if you're and it too cost what me if, money? What if you're going into hole seventeen and you get the call? Day four, hole seventeen, you got a three stroke lead. I think he would do it. I think he would leave. Up and leave. Yes. Even if it's even though like, what, like, like where is his minutes. wife? I mean, the, his wife wouldn't be at like the Augusta Hospital, would she? Was she there? I didn't see a pregnant woman there. Maybe I missed her. I reckon she was back wherever they live. I don't think she was at. So the, then, yeah, right. Like, how how is he going to make it in time anyway? You get the call, honey. Let me finish these two holes here. Yeah, like I. All right, sweetheart, like, I want to be there for the birth. I, get, I absolutely want to be there. Can you just hold on for 20 more minutes, and then I'm going to get on the plane? Or, you know, would, well, I, this impacts her, too, right? Like, you don't marry a professional golfer without, like, you're invested in this, too. These these mm-hmm. wives, you know, they lose their husbands for, like, three-fourths of the year. Like, 
maybe she's like, hey, yeah, finish the finish the I, round. And I get think your ass if home. he's on seventeen and this happens, she's delaying the message. For think so? Yeah, minutes. <laughs> that's what I found interesting about the Masters this week. That really, that was one of the few interesting <laughs> things about this week. I will say, for for next really, year, I really hate that Bryson Bryson DeChambeau. Though I'll put it there, I really hate. See, that I, guy. I, I, he's a lot more interesting to me than Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, so he's I, a I villain. Enjoy we need watching villains. Him more. Villains yes. are good. They're the total opposite of these guys of each other. Scheffler and DeChambeau. Yeah, polar opposites. But but there's nothing. Other than being just the best golfer in the world, there's nothing that interesting about Scheffler. Like you don't get any emotion at all during the round. You find you saw some after he finally won, and I, I get it. That's one of the reasons that he's so good, is because he's just flat line all the way through. But I, it's one of the reasons I I didn't really enjoy was, watching Dustin Johnson when he was really good. Didn't show a lot of emotion. Was always drab when you put a microphone in his face. I want, I, I need somebody that's going to get it going a little bit. Show a little fire. He reminds me of a little bit of Jimmy Johnson when he was dominating in NASCAR. And mm-hmm. he just totally ruined the sport. <laughs> you went How from about, having, like, By Earnhardt. the way, speaking of, uh, speaking of um, people like Bryson that, maybe some people love to hate golf public enemy. Number one has become Zach Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Where did that come from? Well, Holy crap. You have a debacle like he had as Ryder cup captain. Yeah. But and then like, when did he become like mouthy and stuff? He's always had a little bit of an edge to him. I don't know that people ever really saw it. I've seen it before, but he had kind of a run in with some fans. I don't know when that was. Uh whether if it was earlier the week before the the tournament or last week where he was mouthing off to some fans at, around a driving range and then this weekend you know he, he triples 12 on Friday. Scott says it was the waste management which was months ago that he had a run in with some fans who were probably drunk. Um and then this week, it appears as though he tells the fans to F off, or as you would call them at the Masters, the patrons. Because he goes, because he, he, he holds out his triple bogey putt, and he goes, oh, fuck off. <laughs> and he kind of glanced back toward where the patrons would be, and he totally denies it. Says he was... What, what a terrible quote, though. He saying goes, well, I'm not going to deny it, especially if it's on camera. Well... All right, but so he's also have... saying that he was saying it to himself. Yeah. I and like I that don't quote though. It's like I don't buy cool. that. How can you deny it if it's on camera? Like, what well, so you're gonna lie to us if it wasn't? What are you trying to say, Zach? I think he's I, I think what he was saying is, okay, I guess it, I don't remember it, but if it was on camera, it's on camera, but I wasn't saying it to the patrons. But I, I don't buy that. And I don't I don't think anybody does. But he's it's gonna be t- it's gonna be tough for him because now he he remember Colin Montgomery in the nineties, yeah. Fans started getting under his skin and they knew they were getting under his skin because he was bitching about it. And then they just went all in on him and it was like every time he was in contention, the fans would get on him. Wonder too with Zach if because he was always kind of seen as an underdog, mm-hmm. and it set up that way because it was like. Going had to have a tiger a few times, and he was the underdog. And I remember that Masters he won, and it was like this big upset, whatever. And he was always kind of likable. This guy who doesn't have like the long drives in this era, and he, he he's very humble. And well, then you put yourself in that Ryder Cup situation, and all the heat's just on you. And mm-hmm. it was a debacle, as you mentioned. And now he's getting pissed. Now. This this is like in, in our world, Chris, where you have the new head coach, and the new head coach is like super accessible to the media, really nice, wants to like gives you great answers, very insightful. And then there's always a point where they're they're all of a sudden they're just like, fuck you guys. Like you don't do anything for me. 
all you do is shit on me when when I don't do any when I do something bad. Like they get to that point and then it's over, right? We've we've experienced all of it. And then but every once in a while they'll they'll have a another leg. Like Ference has had this opportunity, right? Fran never really did. He's just kind of been like, fuck you guys the whole time. <laughs> um I, I saw that like Paul Rhodes was like he was the nicest, like most accommodating dude ever. And then he was just like double bird every time he walked into the place, like towards the end. And um like Zach Johnson's at like totally at that era now. Cause I even like when he was winning and he was like a good singles player, he he was never really that relevant. Like he was, you know, it's like, oh, this random dude won won the British. Okay. We won't hear from him again for four years. We you put yourself in that writer's cup deal, it's like a whole other thing. Oh, and yeah. now it's now the cold. camera's been in his face, and you're right, and these people are all over his ass. I don't it's not gonna stop. And I don't know what, you know, could have made him react like that at the Masters. Like, was he just, did he react like that because he was pissed that somebody was was clapping because he holed out for triple bogey? I, I don't know. It's, it's, not, it's not a good look. Um, well. And you're right. Like, I remember 15 years ago, Dave Zavolinsky used to throw hypotheticals out there like, hey, if you could be anyone in the world right now, who would it be? <laughs> and I remember a couple of times I said Zach Johnson because he had a major championship. You're such a hawk. Multi-millionaire, but really not recognizable. Nobody's going to bother you that much. That's a good point. That's a You're really good point. just playing golf. And now I, I don't want to be him at all. I mean, it's it's going to be really tough after this for him to... Now, he's not playing as much golf as he used to. He's not a contender anymore. So he's not going to be in, you know, in those situations as much as he would have been 10 years ago. But fans, once they sense that they can get to you, that little crack, and they're already pissed off because of how you performed at the Ryder Cup as a captain. There are going to be more of these instances where he's going to have to turn the other cheek. And that Ryder Cup, it, it it brings forth like a different type of fan, like the more happy Gilmore type of golf mm -hmm. fan that they're drunk. They, they just, they hate the Europeans. You know, it's this whole different like deal that they got going on over there. But I never pay attention to the Ryder Cup because it's always during college football season. It's like it's yeah. a lot tougher. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. tougher to pay attention to when it's in you know that time of year, September. We are in the Channel Seed Studios, and we're in it now, Williams. We're in Two it, you guys. It's... We are in full off season mode. I'm oh so excited God. for the off season. Are you I... really? Oh yeah, it's gonna be great. We're gonna talk realignment. A lot of business, and college sports stuff coming up. I'm just okay. kidding. I don't know. I, I'm really looking forward to this NFL draft. I have a hot take on what I want my Vikings to do, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to let it go yet. Uh, they're going to draft a vegan. Oh, God. I hope JJ McCarthy be vegan. an NFL. I wonder how many vegans there are in the NFL. Like, honestly, like it'd be hard to do. I would think. I think so too. Just like for, to be that big. Um, draft is a, is a week from week from Thursday, by the way. In the yeah. NFL. So we're going to have to do some draft stuff. Patrick McCaffrey is going to Butler, which I, I don't know, like good, good spot for him. He probably fits in well there, doesn't he? I don't know enough about Butler. I'm not going to lie. I haven't watched Butler play. Yeah, I don't know how he fits into that roster. Butler has not been good in a while. They, they haven't made the tournament since 2018. Yeah, they're just one of those realignment deals where it's just like, why? Why? Yeah, it hasn't why? really worked out. For, like it worked out for Creighton going from the, the Missouri Valley to the Big East. It has not really worked out for Butler. Um, that That's like, you think of Butler as like, okay, that's, that's my guy a drop, right there. A, a drop Greg down Oden. in competition. That's my guy. I helped him get his Apple TV set up at his hotel room. Remember that? <laughs> He's a Butler assistant? Friend of the program. He's the uh, ops director at Butler. Okay. Um. 
you think of Butler as like, okay, it's a, it's a little step down in competition. No, it's not really. It's the no. Big East. It's the Big East. He's going to be playing UConn. But <sighs> the Big East is just going to get better in basketball too because they yeah. don't have football to deal with with NIL. Like they are going to be the juggernaut basketball conference in the next – if they aren't already. I truly mean that. But it's pretty clear to see how this went down. You got Connor, his brother, who is working with the Pacers in that city. You have Caitlin Clark, who is going to be drafted by the Indiana Fever tonight in that city. So that makes sense. Great point. I hadn't thought about the tie there and how it's just a comfortable place for a young man who's been through a lot as far as the cancer and the depression and, or anxiety, whatever all that, all that stuff was. So, uh, yeah, I hope he does well. I wonder now where his, his younger brother goes. Well, I, wonder... I think Butler's one of the schools recruiting him yeah, as well. Yeah, that's what I saw. So maybe that's a thing. I don't know. Okay, let's move on to a little NFL draft here, some Cooper DeGene. I got a little TJ Tampa nugget for you as well. I think Lay it on me. Well, Rob Gray, who writes for us at Cyclone Fanatic, does a great job. And he always go he he Rob's the best. He's the best freaking we we're so lucky to have him. He got on this Mel Kuyper conference call uh last week and started hammering Kuyper on TJ Tampa. I don't think he's gonna be drafted in the first round. Okay, so I wanna I wanna make it clear. But Kuyper was saying that he's definitely like a second round guy in his mind with a, with, for, he thinks he's undervalued according to scouts, according to Mel Kuyper. And many of you are rolling your eyes because you think he's an idiot, whatever. He's been doing this for 50 years or whatever it is. Wouldn't that be wild if Iowa State had that whole deal where they couldn't get a player drafted in the first round for like 50 some years and then they had two in a row? <laughs> It would Which be. is it's it's possible again. I don't think it will happen, but I also like I was thinking about it last night. It's like this tells me two things: one, how bad Iowa State football was for a really long time, and two, just that bar that Campbell really has raised that you have guys in this conversation seemingly every year now, and they will coming up too with some of these younger guys. I mean, I I don't know. I was reading that over the weekend, and it it was staggering to me because again. I can tell you as a guy who covers Iowa State football for 20 years, we used to not even pay attention to the NFL draft. It'd be like, oh, maybe this guy yeah, is going to – You'd bury your head in the sand because yeah. all the Hawkeye fans yeah. would come out. Maybe this guy will sneak into the sixth round, right? Like that was kind of – and you would, you would pay attention on Saturday because just in case you needed to go and write the story. And then, oh, okay, where are they signing free agent deals? That mm -hmm. was always the story. And now it's like you have, like, legitimate guys every year. So it, it was it was kind of staggering to me to think about that, that drought that we all talked about for so long, how it could just be shattered two years in a row. Anyways, that's what I got for you on TJ Tampa. So you dug up some stuff on Cooper DeGene. What's going on here? Well, I, I was in the, in the newsroom at CBS Sports HQ last week, and I overheard uh, my good friend Pete Prisco who's been covering the NFL for 35 years, 40 years almost, say that he thinks Cooper DeGene is a safety. Interesting. Um, and then, and you know, sometimes Pete will say things. and He's got strong opinions and he believes them, but so I just kind of, you know, let it go. I didn't want to get into a whole thing with him. But then, over the weekend, I came across a tweet from the Ross Tucker podcast, and he had on a uh, longtime NFL guy. What's his name? Greg uh, Cosell. Cosell, who's, you know, he's he's been involved with the league for a long time. He's NFL films forever. And they had him on. And Aiden, you have that clip where he talks I think about. it's going to be really interesting with him. Because there will be a lot of teams that will see him as a safety. He's, he's a little stiff, um, and that really shows up on tape. I mean, even when he plays press, I mean, he struggles a bit. 
Uh, it would not surprise me if teams see him at safety. In fact, I, I could easily make the argument that the corner from a year ago at Iowa, Riley Moss, who was drafted by Denver maybe in the third round, if memory serves me correctly, was a better corner prospect than Cooper DeGene. Um, some might even see him as a big nickel safety. Some might see him as a star playing in the slot. Um, he's a physical kid. He's a competitive competitive kid. He's going to have a workout, I think, in a couple of days because he's been cleared. And my guess is he'll test really well. But there's just a stiffness to him that concerns you a little bit uh, when you see him as an outside corner. <laughs> so th That's the first I had heard that, that there's concern for his stiffness at cornerback. What? What are you, what are you smirking I about? Don't... Everybody's using the word stiff a lot right now. <laughs> now, I don't think the word stiff has ever been used this many times on a on our show. And, and it's been used, people have said stiff like 15 times in the last two minutes. You're a stiff. Now, Brant points out the, the obvious. <laughs> he says the NFL won't play white corners. The last starting white cornerback in the NFL was Jason Seahorn. That's crazy. I mean, this is a generation ago. That's I think crazy. His last NFL start was like in 2002. And so I know this is something that sometimes is hard for NFL teams and personnel guys to get over. Are they seeing that or is it really something on tape or are they just being really nitpicky? Now I asked Brady Quinn as well. Brady Quinn is not buying this. Brady Quinn says, this dude is a cornerback and a good cornerback. When did the safety talk start? I'm telling you, last week was the first I'd heard of it. Now, okay, because I hadn't heard anything like this until you brought it up in the rundown. I'm sure there have been people that have mentioned it just because of, you know, the obvious thing that they just don't, these, these white kids, they don't typically work out at cornerback in the NFL. And so I think some people are scared. Can you tell me exactly what, because he, he said the word stiff so many times. <laughs> is that like a nice way of saying unathletic? Like what, what does that exactly mean? I think, play that clip again, Aiden. Let's count how many times that Greg Cosell says stiff. Really interesting with him. Because there will be a lot of teams that will see him as a safety. He's, he's a little stiff. Um, and that really shows up on tape. I mean, even when he plays press, I mean, he struggles a bit. Uh, it would not surprise me if teams see him at safety. In fact, I, I could easily make the argument that the corner from a year ago at Iowa, Riley Moss, who was drafted by Denver maybe in the third round, if memory serves me correctly, was a better corner prospect than Cooper DeGene. Um some might even see him as a big nickel safety. Some might see him as a star playing in the slot. Um, he's a physical kid. He's a competitive, competitive kid. He's going to have a workout, I think, in a couple of days because he's been cleared. And my guess is he'll test really well. But there's just a stiffness to him that concerns you a little bit uh, when you see him as an outside corner. He only said it twice, uh -huh. Williams. You were acting like the guy said it five times. Okay, I'm sorry. He said it two it was, times, and it was like a minute and a half apart. <laughs> I think it was because when you introduced the clip, you said stiff like two times. I don't think I did. Did I really? Of, what uh, it is he calling him stiff because he's a white corner? Like, are we? Can we just cut through it here? Is that? I don't we've, know. we've all we've all inadvertently done this before. To, to be like, clear, Greg is a white guy. Okay. If, if you're, if you're listening yeah. on the podcast and you can't not, see it, I'm just saying like, what does that mean, mean exactly? He's just a little stiff Williams. He's a little, he's, <laughs> I mean, safeties uh, are more stiff than cornerbacks. Cornerbacks but what does are more that mean? Like, agile. Stiff. Like, Oh, stiff. Maybe, you know, difficulty, I, I, I haven't seen what, that. What, does he need, like, a massage before the game to be yeah, less stiff? Yeah, some Pilates. I, I, I don't know. But people are starting to say this a little bit more, and we're, we're, we're getting there. And I, and I don't think somebody's going to come out and draft him and say, we're drafting him as a safety. 
like if this happens, it's going to happen. It's going to be like in camp. Packers are going to draft him, and the GM is just going to step up onto the stage. So he is way too stiff to be a cornerback. <laughs> well, we listen, he's listen. We're we're taking him here, twenty first overall. But let's make no mistake; he's not coming in here as a cornerback. There's just a too there's too much of a stiffness about him. <laughs> he's going to be a great safety because safeties can be more stiff. They can. They're stiff, and they'll stick you. <laughs> Two guys here on Iowa everywhere. Uh, Greg Cosell, I tell you. I used to talk to uh, Lane. You remember, you know Lane Danielson, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he was a freak athlete wide receiver at Iowa State for those younger folks who didn't watch him. And he, Lane always calls people out when they do the whole – Oh, he's just a um, – that guy's motor is just crazy. You know, he's, mm-hmm. he's, he's pesky. He Lane can pull out the – oh, you're, you mean you're telling me I'm white? Mm-hmm. Sneaky athletic. Sneak yeah. Deceptive always. speed. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Aiden. Well, Lane, it, every time I see Lane, I feel like I'm getting one of those from him. It's funny. And as Jeff points out, it's an odd take from Cosell. Given yeah, that I, Cooper DeGene is is one of the most athletic guys that we've seen on a football field, and that's true. He he is. Now we're seeing him in college. We're seeing him in the Big Ten West. We're seeing him. We're thinking of him returning punts, as well. You know, there's 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 different things that you need. There's a next level that you need at the NFL. A, a big next, especially at that position when you're. You know, you're you're tasked with going up against the the greatest athletes in the world who are wide receivers. But uh, I thought that was interesting to hear to hear him say that because I I had you know you hear every once in a while people throwing out yeah maybe he's going to be a safety or maybe 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 this maybe that but to, for to have him say that he thinks he's stiff there's a stiffness to him. I thought that was interesting. I wasn't even being a perv either. I just thought it was a funny use of the word stiff, like any, you know, a lot of stiff. A um, couple things here that we need to address. Uh, it appears that Van Winkle is just boycotting the show. He put out a angry tweet the other day. He thought that I misrepresented what happened between him. And the librarian. He disputes that? Well, and I followed up with my wife, and she, you know, she backed it that there is a, a, again, the, the, the librarian did not want to give Van Winkle the glasses because he did not come with a child. This event, this eclipse event was for the children. And he wasn't even going to stay for the event. No, he was going to take the glasses and just leave. He wasn't even supporting the local library. And that's what he did. And she, apparent, allegedly, she was like, no, this is for kids. If you don't have a kid with you, we can't give you these glasses. We only have so many of them. The children, we have all these children getting out of school here, and they're coming here, and we only have so many glasses that, and Van Winkle, I I. Again, I was not there. I was in the school line to pick up my daughter, who was wanting to get a pair of glasses but couldn't get one because they were all sold out by the time we got there. Allegedly, Van Winkle had words with this librarian. <laughs> Something about I pay taxes here. You know. Kyle says Van Winks is the Zach Johnson <laughs> of the podcast. <laughs> by the way, I saw a comment from uh, someone who had a run-in with Zach Johnson. What? Chris, Chris says Zach was fairly rude at the waste management a year ago. I was wearing a Hawkeye hat. I'm old and sober. It was a Tuesday outing. He refused to autograph anything. Unbelievable. That's not that's not Iowa nice. I'm telling you, he is. It, this is that. Do you remember that second stint Ferentz had when he was just like mean all of a sudden and was like, where did this come from? Yeah. Snorting at everything. Yeah. Like, 
and now he's nice again. Like he he got over the hump. I'm telling you, this is Paul Rhodes on his way out. Like just pissed. Like just mad. Speaking of mad, it sounds like Van Wife was mad listening to the show. Yeah, he got really ticked off. He thought we misrepresented it. He he tweeted, I listened to the show while driving with my wife in California. She had two comments. They had filthy mouths, and she turned the show off twice. She also said Chris Hassel is so weird. <laughs> this was apparently the first time she's ever heard of the program? <laughs> well... <laughs> Didn't she like refuse to add your dad on Facebook? Oh yeah. That's so this right. goes back a while. Oh, this all stems from my dad being a weirdo and trying to add her to Facebook. So she knows me really well. I always smoke her ribs. You We're... smoke her ribs for yeah, her? Yeah, she likes she comes over and she eats ribs at our house. By herself? <laughs> no, the whole, the whole family <laughs> comes. No, me and me and Mallory are tight. We're like that, man. I've known these. I I told you we basically raised Van Winkle. Like he's basically like my son. So like their like second date was at my house. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she knows what she's getting into here with me. You're a bit of a wild card, I think. Well, how I'm really not that much different than you, am I? No, we're pretty similar. I just I'd like to know Van Winkle's side of this librarian story, because from what I heard, it was a thing. And I know that my daughter was unable to get Eclipse glasses because they were gone. Is he ever coming back to the show? I I think he'll be here on Thursday, from what I understand. In his defense, we're giving him shit. He got to see his dad's grave for the first time. Jeez, that was a tough turn. (laughs) What the hell? I, I, that's what I love about Van Winks is he's like the little brother. I can give him, I can just flip him shit and then give him a hug. It's that's just kind of how well, it I thought. You, little is what he, is his your wife brother, about? or is what he is, your son? Because you've said both. Yeah, whatever. What is his wife? Him. I want to know what she hates about you. Why did she turn the show off? Would be my question. Like, is she that like upset? Was it because the kids were listening? He did say the kids were in the car, and I oh, do remember. Yeah, you made that. You went on that whole rant about schools and yeah. eclipses and not being an effing idiot. That may have been the point where she. Yeah, but the kids the were probably like, "Yeah, yeah, I could have watched the eclipse." Because I'm sure Van Wink probably didn't let his kids watch the eclipse because he Cause took he- the only glasses that there were, <laughs> so that he could watch. Like stay inside, cover up. <laughs> he put them in the shed, no windows. I heard that Bloom made his wife go out and look at the eclipse for him and report back. <laughs> he was too lazy to go out and look at himself. Real Housewives of Bondurant. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're out mowing the yard. <laughs> oh, shit. I don't know why this is making me laugh so much, but it you, is. You, you do have the giggles today. Uh, okay, so speaking of... I don't know if I've ever told you this story. So it's severe weather season here in Iowa. And we got a huge threat of severe weather coming up tomorrow. Ooh. Amber Alexander has a forecast out for us on Iowa everywhere. Y'all can go check it out. She got went into detail on it. Like, oh, I love moments. it when severe weather pops into the, the lexicon. Hey, Aiden, take a note right here. We need to have like a severe weather sounder. You know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. very damning. Yeah. You, it's just like you hear it and you're like, uh oh. You know? Yes. Nothing gets me going like like severe weather. So we had the that threat of a tornado. Pretty big tornado come through town here. Um I don't know, five, six years ago now. And so I'm outside, I'm doing what every you know, red blooded American's doing. I'm filming the tornado as it's coming sure. over my house. Sure. What else would you do? Yeah. I put my dog down in the basement to make sure he was safe. And then I ran upstairs and went outside. And I got great footage. Uh, My friends Ed Wilson and Brett McIntyre and Amber, and they all used it at Channel 13. The National Weather Service picked it up. I believe it was on CNN. I'm a journalist, Chris. I can't turn it off, okay? I'm a journalist. Mm -hmm. A professional one at that. So I'm standing outside. 
It's one of my favorite stories. Real Housewives of Bondurant here. And I'm shooting the tornado as it's ripping through. And like, you can, and I can, it's the closest I've ever, well, I will ever be to a tornado because it went right over my house. What do you mean it went over your house? It did. It went over my house. So you're telling me you went outside of your house, you stood outside, you were shooting the tornado as it went right over you. What is this? Like the movie Twister? I can show you the video. Yeah. I mean, the video. The tornado right. hit you, went right over you. And no, you just stood the there and filmed. It, it hadn't touched down yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, like, and it was wild because I, you know, you don't understand until you're that close, like the suction. Yeah. If that makes sense, there's like a. But it suction. didn't suck you up. It no. went right over you but and I, didn't suck but you. But I'm up. watching like people's like roofs and stuff like fly up into this thing, and I'm out there shooting the tornado. And all of a sudden, this lady, like across the way, so it'd be like Bloom's neighbor, is out on her, she's out on her deck, yelling at me to go inside. (laughs) She's like, quit being a fucking idiot, go inside. There's a fucking door to (laughs) And my response to her was, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, right. What are you? Oh, you're, you're doing the same thing. Why are you yelling at me? Wait a second. You guys could hear each other from across the neighborhood with a tornado ripping overhead. This this we're, sounds we're like one of your that. ghost stories. No, it's the truth. The reason is I saw that lady this weekend, and like we're not like friends. They've since moved, but we're enough acquaintances. And I saw her in town. In the it's a small town. Whenever I see this lady. I just think of us cursing each other out during this tornado, and we have never talked about it. Really? It's always just kind of been like something we just... It's like the booger guy at Houston. Oh, yeah. Like, right. I see him all the time, but I'm never going to be like, hey, you blew your booger all over my arm. <laughs> I just wish that I had video of that. That reminds me. My uh, my in-laws ha- had their first trip to Clorinda last week. Really? Where'd they go? Jay Bruners? They were killing time because the their grandkids live in Corning, the Corning area. They said they went to Runza. Oh, yeah. It's so good. They said yeah. they were really impressed with Clorinda. Yeah. They, and they weren't kidding. They yeah, said it was a, great a really nice town, which really yep. surprises me. because I've never been through it. I've been close. But any every town around there is not impressive. They also went to the axe murder house oh nice yeah they said that there was a guy there that was like wandering around and i'm wondering if it was your dad it or no it's probably Velisca johnny so like they, they said that they went there but they didn't do the tour oh but they well, went into the house so it's how, how like is the that paul possible? revere house there's like two rooms but this like, is where they got killed. Is your dad sitting out there charging people to come in and look at look through the murder axe house? <laughs> no, but him and him and Johnny are tight, man. Well, who's Johnny? Velisca Johnny. He's the guy who oversees the house. So he's the one charging people to come in? Yeah, he's like a world class paranormal investigator. That's Damn. my kid crying in the background. By I kind of wish that they would have well, they said that they went in, though. They just didn't do the tour. So that tells me that they went in and looked around themselves. That's dangerous, too. You don't want to do that because that's Why? how the Ghosts spirits get attach, you? They attach themselves to you if, you if you're ignorant to the situation. But if you go in with Velisca Johnny? Yeah, because they trust world him. Class, oh, okay, so they won't yeah. attach. So they might have spirits theory, attached to them now? It's possible. It's possible. I mean, I'm, I'm not guaranteeing anything but it's possible if they were so they just walked in the house they didn't talk to anybody just walked in. all i heard from my wife was that they went to the axe murder house they went in but they didn't do the tour so how did this get brought up like they just called and said hey we went to runza it was it was lovely for the most part yeah they were having their their usual i guess they they usually talk on sundays and they talked for an hour. And Have you ever had a Runza? No. It's amazing. It's, it sounds horrible. It's so good. Like just the name, a, a Runza. That's a horrible name. 
I like to go there when I come back. I'll I'll bring a cooler and bring buy five or six frozen ones to. And what is it up. again? So it's like a, it's like it's like it's like a calzone basically, with okay. loose meat, cabbage, and like their uh, <laughs> cabbage. Yeah, there you go, right there. It's a it's a loose. That looks meat terrible. Sandwich. That that looks like something you would get at a gas station on the interstate. No, no. It's been sitting there for three days. Keith really, says really it's a good. glorified Hot Pocket, which, yeah, that's what it looks like. Screw you, Keith. That looks terrible. What You, you really um, think that, that, that it's good? Yeah, it's really good. I'll bring you one sometime. No, um, you won't. Iowa Meat Sweat says, I thought Runza's were only in Nebraska. Uh, Clorinda, Iowa, the only non-Nebraska Runza oh. in the world. Really? I heard that the guy, the axe murder guy, stopped at Runza. Well, good, Johnny. No, no. The guy who, who actually carried out the murders <laughs> had the Runza, and it drove him to axe murder people. Well, it's probably because he couldn't find a bathroom, and he went crazy. <laughs> Does your dad still cut the yard there over there? No, he dad retired. He doesn't. He doesn't do that anymore. So they're just letting the yard run. Dad's wild. got all sorts of stories of weird shit happening when he was fertilizing that axe murder house, though. Apparently the the spirits attach themselves to the to the seed. Dad's out there spreading his seed all over the axe murder house, and they they like that. We'll have to send some channel seedsmen over there. <laughs> see if they can get attached to some spirits. <laughs> Oh God! Okay, we gotta get out of here. Get to work. Yeah, my kid is crying in the background. Which kid? Oh my God, my youngest. She's a. She's terrified of bugs. <laughs> like any bug? Yes. Like a fly? Yes, and she'll lose it. <laughs> I got a. <clears throat> excuse me, I got a lizard about this size out of my uh out of my bedroom last night a lizard mm-hmm. a little lizard what did about, you do about the size of it was about what is that five inches long i usually grab a plastic cup and usher them into that cup and then go outside flip it back outside because if they're in your house long enough, usually they're really fast, but if they're in your house long enough, they get a little slow, so you can you can chase them down. What do you do when you catch one? I just told you. I throw, throw it outside. Do you ever kill it? No. Why would I do that? My Elise has been very adamant that whenever I catch a bug, that it be executed. Really? Mm-hmm. See, I, I try not to kill anything. Even the smallest bugs. Now, sometimes that's impossible. But okay, every now and then, me, you can catch them. This makes me feel better. Hawkeye Fan 11 says that his daughter screams if a fly goes near her, too. So I took my kids, and we went on a walk yesterday. Long walk, like a three-mile walk. Dirks loves wow. his walk. So we, and Your daughter the, walked three miles? She was riding her bike. Okay. And the the second half of the walk was just her screaming and bawling because a bug landed on her arm. <laughs> it was horrible. Everybody's like what? staring at us. Where did this irrational fear come from? I don't know. Well, kids just they get weird things in their heads, man. I mean, I'm crazy and I'm forty almost, so it's like I get it. I mean, I could see being afraid of like a bee. Because it could sting you. I don't think she fully understands the difference between, like, a wasp and a fly. Uh, it's just It might as well be like a tiger. I can hear her crying in there right now, and I know it's because she saw a bug. I know. I can tell. It's a type of cry. It's a weird dad thing. You should move down to Florida because we rarely Oh, yeah. And then she's going to have lizards. See, well, we rarely ever see any bugs in the house. Because there's so many like lizards and stuff around here. They they eat I, them, right? I never see flies or anything in the house. Just lizards. And then they fill up your gutter. Yeah, they're just in the gutters. Yeah. 
Uh, I haven't had any problems, though, since the Switch. Since I got that new uh, new gutter system. All good. It's good, man. Good now, you. would your daughter be afraid of, a, of an iguana? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lose her mind. Hmm. That's too bad. Wouldn't be a good situation. All right, get to work. We'll watch you today. No, you a little won't. WNBA draft coverage. Fam Winkle will hopefully be back if his wife doesn't make him quit. Yeah, I, I really want to. I really we need to get to the bottom of this dog bite story too. Yeah, we're Van Winkle's getting grilled on Thursday's show. Be here for it on Iowa Everywhere. <laughs>